The EcoFlow Wave 2 is a versatile, small, portable aircon for both heating and cooling that can be used in your home, in your camper van, or even when you're out camping. In a world where extreme temperatures are now a regular occurrence, with temperature records being broken every single year, that's an incredibly useful device. Even more so if you're British, because our homes are typically built to keep the heat in rather than keep us cool, and whole house aircon systems are just unheard of here, nor would they be cost effective. The EcoFlow Wave 2 is one of a raft of new products launched by EcoFlow this year, who are typically better known for solar and battery technology. A few weeks back, I reviewed the EcoFlow Glacier as well. It's a game-changing portable fridge freezer that can actually make fresh ice in as little as 12 minutes or and runs on battery or solar power. As expected, there's a battery element to the Wave 2, though it is optional. By default, it runs from the wall socket, but you can also get this optional battery pack to make the Wave 2 truly portable. And you can run off solar. More on the battery and solar power options later. In fact, this is the world's first battery-powered portable heat pump. Heat pump, eh? I know that's a bit of a controversial word at the moment, at least here in the UK. Heat pumps don't work, you bloody lefty liberal hippie. Hands off my gas boiler. But the magic inside here is heat pump technology. That means it can both cool and heat efficiently, drawing heat from one side and giving it to the other. So briefly, how does it work? Essentially, you have a refrigerant that's pumped around inside. And on one side, it's compressed, which makes it hot. And when it's pumped over to the other side, it expands and cools down, drawing ambient heat from the air. It's an extremely efficient way of heating and cooling and can work with pretty much any ambient temperatures. Even if it's minus three degrees Celsius outside, it would still be able to exploit the differential between the liquid in the heat exchange system and the air to extract some heat from it. The Wave 2 can warm or cool anywhere from 16 to 30 degrees Celsius or 60 to 86 Fahrenheit, and it's rated at 5,100 BTU when AC powered or a little less when running off battery. In terms of power output and price, that does put it at quite a premium compared to other generic small mobile aircon units when running on uh, wall socket power anyway. You can find up to 9,000 BTU devices for as little as one third the cost of this, though they are about double the size as well. However, this sized unit should be perfect for most British bedrooms, home offices, garden sheds, RV or camper vans, as well as tents. But even in a larger room, you're going to see some benefit depending on how closely you sit to it. Obviously, a blast of cool air on you is incredible, even if the overall room temperature doesn't alter that much. Now, unlike a lot of traditional ACs and room heaters, which are one way only, i.e. they only cool you down or they only heat you up with an element to warm the room by convection, the EcoFlow Wave 2 does both simply by switching how the pump circulates. So this will serve you well during all temperature extremes and is therefore about as versatile as you can get. Setting up the EcoFlow Wave 2 can be a bit fussy because there's a lot of things to attach and plug in. And although you can just turn it on and press go to your desired temperature, that's not recommended because the outlet and inlet would basically be pulling from the same room air. It does work, of course, in that you'll get, say, cool air blowing onto you, but the air out the back would be warmer and therefore the net ambient temperature wouldn't change much at all. So the EcoFlow Wave 2 it has no less than four air intakes and outlets. The lower ones are where air is drawn in. This is both at the front and the back here. And the upper ones expel it. Again, having either taken a bit of heat from the other air or given some heat to it. The rear of the unit, that's back here, this goes to the outside, while the front of the unit, just underneath the control panel here, this is where the good stuff comes from. So of course, to get the best from the system, you'll want to attach the provided long air ducts. These are easy to attach with the locking adapters, but fitting these into your window in an airtight way is the main challenge. To that end, EcoFlow also provides a DIY window vent board that you can wedge into your window, but there's only so much they can do there and it's still on you to seal the other gap somehow. I ended up using sort of towels and such just as a quick solution for testing, but it would be better to custom cut your own piece of foam. 
Now I will note that while the flexible duct tubing here is quite long, about six foot, it wasn't long enough to reach our bedroom window, which is quite high when sat on the floor. So it's designed for sort of chest or waist height window frames. And I ended up having to elevate the Wave 2 on a bedside table. And also bear in mind, you need about 50 centimeters of clearance behind it for this semi-flexible piping uh, to turn upwards and to enable a clear airflow. So while it is compact, you might need to think a little bit harder on the placement. Now this is the main recommended use case with the EcoFlow Wave 2 sitting indoors and this ducting then pointing outside. But if you're going camping and you want to leave the unit itself outside, as long as it's not going to be rained on, then you can also do that. There's another vent adapter provided, which you put onto the outlet here. And then you can just attach one tube, which will blow the resultant cool or warm air directly into your tent with a small gap in the zipper. So again, it's really versatile. However, I will note that the temperature sensor for automatic operation is on the unit itself. So when you're using it with just the outlet hose coming into your tent or garden office, you'll lose any automated features there and you will need to sort of run it in max or just basic cool mode without regard to the temperature. Now it works over Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. So if you find it getting a bit chilly or too warm, you can remotely turn it up or turn it off completely without having to go outside, open the door and lose all your cool or warm air. So that's really convenient. So the standard unit measures 34 centimeters by 30 by 52 or 20.4 inches by 11.7 by 13.2. And that's without the battery, making it a lot smaller and more compact than many so-called portable air conditioning units. But at 14.5 kilos or 32 pounds, it's still pretty heavy. Obviously, this isn't something you would want to lug up a mountainside, but it's easily a one person lift to put it in the trunk of your car. So let's talk about operation. It's really simple. On the left of the display is a big button to switch modes between cool, warm or fan only. There are two buttons to set the desired temperatures underneath, a fan speed setting and another to change operation between max, eco and sleep mode. Eco mode increases battery life to make it last as long as possible, but makes it less responsive to any temperature changes. While sleep or quiet mode cuts noise down to an absolute minimum, max mode is for situations where you're just melting or freezing and don't care. It just sets the temperature to maximum or minimum, fan on full and let's rip with the good stuff. Then you get a big LED uh, color indicator bar, orange for warming, blue for cooling and white for fan only mode. And like all EcoFlow products, the Wave 2 is integrated beautifully with the EcoFlow app. It's very easy to add the device to your account, then set up Wi-Fi credentials for truly remote access or just rely on Bluetooth. And the app itself is a pleasure to use. It's one of the few smartphone apps that actually sits in my recent apps drawer a lot of the time. It's incredibly helpful if you're in bed, it's too hot, you wanna turn it off, that sort of thing. Okay, I mentioned a battery, it's not cheap at an added $800, but it is a pretty sizable battery pack at 1,159 watt hours, providing two to eight hours of heating or cooling. Obviously the performance uh, will vary depending on how hard you're pushing it and hundreds of other factors. So take that figure with a grain of salt. It also adds another 7.6 kilograms or 17 pounds and three inches of height to the package. If you have a spare EcoFlow battery anyway, such as the Delta 2 or Delta 2 Max, you can optionally purchase a connector cable and use it with that instead. Though the Wave 2 battery model, though the Wave 2 battery module is very neat, it's a slim flat device that clips on the bottom of the unit nicely and plugs in neatly with a small flat cable on one side. One downside of this battery, however, is that it uses older lithium nickel manganese cobalt oxide or LINMC, which tends to degrade to 80% capacity after just 800 cycles, unlike the superior, albeit heavier, LFP cells, which can go for up to 3000 cycles before degradation. And it's worth noting that all the other EcoFlow products, as far as I know, use LFP cells. So this is a bit of an outlier. Also, for some reason, there's no way to charge the battery without it being attached to the Wave 2. You can't take the battery off and separately charge it from solar while leaving the Wave 2 running inside the house. Instead, you'd need to use a long XT60 or MC4 cable to 
basically take the solar from the outside and plug it direct into this. This is less of a problem if you're running and charging from a wall socket, but it's a bizarre decision nonetheless. You can use up to 400 watts of solar or 200 watts from your car's cigarette lighter port to charge up the battery. But annoyingly on the UK unit anyway, the power plug can't actually be detached. You see, I've got it coiled up here. So even when you're running on battery only, I get this cable bizarrely dangling off the edge. And I can only assume that there's some sort of European safety standard for AC units that they had to comply with, because in the manual it refers to both types, one with a detachable cable. So while I would definitely recommend getting this with the battery uh, for true portability, there's been some very strange design choices here that mean it's not a perfect combination. And I don't know if that's the product designers to blame or again, some weird regulations that they had to comply with. Okay, let's talk briefly about performance to testing because it's kind of difficult for me to test this in the real world uh, at the moment, just because our weather is particularly mild, but I couldn't put this review off any longer. First, for an extreme test, I put this here uh, in our greenhouse, which measures around 20 meters squared. Starting from a high of 32 degrees Celsius, I set the cooling to max and let it go to work. It estimated about five hours running purely off the battery. Unfortunately, in order to make this a real test, of course, I had to close the doors and the windows or seal them up as best as possible. And it turned out that the ability of the greenhouse to heat up far outweighed the ability of the Wave 2 to cool it down. So the temperature began to rise rapidly. Now there was some lovely cool air coming out of the Wave 2 that meant it was perfectly possible to stand here and watch as the test happened. Uh, but unfortunately I had to abandon it because it quickly reached 38, 40 degrees Celsius and showed no signs of stopping. So I didn't want the plants to die. It turns out that just opening the doors and windows was more effective at cooling in this case. I also tried cooling our bedroom, which is a little bit bigger than average in the UK anyway, because there's an ensuite without a door. So it's not a huge room by any means, but bigger than average. Our room thermometer at the time of this test read 19 degrees C on the other side of the room. It was 26 degrees outside where the inlet and outlet tube was. And I'll note that the Wave 2 took a few minutes to catch up and correctly report the internal temperature on its own display. On max mode, it was only a minute or so before I could feel the cool air coming out, but it took a further hour for the temperature to go down by one degree as measured on the other side of the room again. Now this I would call another bit of an extreme test because in reality, you're not gonna be trying to cool a room down when it's 19 degrees C. Obviously that's plenty comfortable, but for me at least, the ability to cool the entire room down was quite muted and a little bit disappointing. One last thing to note is that while there's uh, little else you need to do in the way of maintenance, if the average humidity is above 70% or pretty much whenever you're using the cooling function, you will need to attach this uh, manual draining hose. There is an internal tank and it will fill up uh, without this but there's a little indicator on the screen that tells you when it's time to empty it. And you can do that by holding down the fan button for a few seconds. Although of course, make sure you've plugged this in around the back. So once I'd done that test and the unit was off and the temperature normalized, I swapped over to warming. And again, I found it took about an hour or so to add uh, at least a degree onto the ambient temperature. Though again, warm air was coming out of the outlet after a minute or two and got much the same results there. So I'm not sure if I'd say that was a disappointing result. It just goes to demonstrate that this is only really suitable for smaller rooms, uh, camper van sort of size, tents, small home offices, rather than a larger uh, room in your house. In terms of noise level, it varies. This is in night mode. So you still get cool air can feel barely anything. But it's not really running a fan. Eco mode. Fifty-five, sixty. Standard mode. Same thing, fifty-five, sixty. Medium fan. 6570 high fan 7075
Now that's quite a variation, but personally I find the noise soothing even at night. In fact, I have been known to play uh, brown noise machine soundtracks at night. But if you are bothered by that sort of noise, then I think the sleep mode should be fine for you. Just don't be running it in max mode. So should you buy the EcoFlow Wave 2 portable air conditioner for heating and cooling? It's an incredibly versatile device that's easy to carry around and pop in the back of your car and can run off a battery pack rather than plugged into a wall. And I think that's the main use case here. If you're never going to travel and you don't need that true portability, you will find something that can perform just as well, if not better, for significantly cheaper. It's not worth buying this if you're just gonna stick it in the corner of your room and forget about it. Or if you're trying to warm or cool a large or even average size space in the home. But if you do have an RV or love driving out to your cabin, going camping or running truly off grid, and want one unit to suit all situations that can be carried around with you, this is a great choice. Anyway, thanks to EcoFlow for shooting this over for review. If you have any questions or feedback, let me know in the comments section. Otherwise, hit like and consider subscribing for more reviews, tutorials, and everything else from all of us over at makeuseof.com. Until next time.